What's going on guys, T2RX6 here, back for another third party review, and today we're taking a look at KFC, CST03 and 04, B-Box, and Bird Bomber, who combined to make uh, Box Bomber, and if you're not familiar with these guys, this is Beast Box and Squawk Talk, and together they make Squawk Box, I believe. Uh, if you want to see their G1s, I don't have them, but I do have my handy dandy book here. And here is Beast Box. And uh, surprisingly, when I was looking at these pictures here, I kind of don't think that the KFC ones are all that great of an improvement, but um, maybe a little more articulation in the combined mode and the robot. But at least when we get to Squawk Talk here, on the next page, if my fingers will serve my purposes, yeah, he looks almost the same. We've got a couple ball joints on a couple places here, but I don't think that really helps uh, Squawk Talk all that much. And then here's your combined mode right there where all the guns end. Yes, Squawk Box. So let's actually take a look at these guys on the back of the boxes. There's some bios. I'll put them in the pictures after. We don't really need to spend any more time on that. And you get these two cassettes right here and yes they are your mini cassette sizes here's uh frumble whichever one you want to call him you can see same size but bringing out frumble here actually uh outlines a problem i have with these toys see how nicely detailed that is i mean there's no doubt that that's a cassette now i know reaper labels just recently put out a set for this that puts like uh the uh, microfilm or whatever and stuff on there and uh, just kind of makes it look even more cassette like really awesome for reaper labels to do that I love reaper labels um, but still clearly a cassette when we get to these guys who come in these pretty nifty purple cases that can double as energon cubes if you so choose um, not really by themselves they're a little bit small but if you put them together you kind of got an energon cube thing going on there but yeah, taking a look at these guys, there is absolutely no detail on these guys to really show that it's a cassette. I mean, you got some molded in reels there, but other than that, there's no paintwork, there's no stickers. It's just very plain looking, um, which is disappointing when you look at the masterpieces here. And uh, Beast Box is not any different there. Just really nothing. You know, the, the only advantage is his spools are actually painted black this time. Um, I really wanted to say I hope Repro Labels does some kind of labels for this to make it look a little bit better. And I sort of do, but at the same hand, like, you know, I don't feel like I really want to pay anything over like maybe $10 to get labels for these guys because, uh, yeah, it just really should have been there from the factory in my opinion. Uh, if you take the uh, Rumble Frenzy whatever case here, and you can actually still, of course, if you put it in the right way, they should still fit in here. The case is not really the important part, though. These guys just don't hold together very well in their cassette modes either. Maybe they don't fit in the case. Nope, they fit. So yeah, you can still fit them in the case if that's really important to you, if you want to put them in clear cases. Um, also with these guys, you get the two accessories for uh, Beast Box, and the two accessories for uh, Squawk Talk. Now, if you're like me, you probably got these guys, or you're interested in getting these guys, because you got one of this dude. And you will be happy to know that if you're interested in it, you can make these cassettes fit right in his chest. That's no problem. I don't know if I would do the gimmick where you push this back and he can actually eject them forward. I don't know if I necessarily trust the uh, mechanism that much that he won't end up getting stuck in there like he is now apparently. But uh, yeah, he does fit inside the door. Albeit a little bit snugly when he gets pushed uh, back like that. Of course, every tape I've seen kind of gets stuck in there a little bit. So yeah, you can do that if you really want to. Um, I wouldn't really recommend pushing them back. It might work. I'm not willing to try it. So let's get these guys to their uh, individual uh, animal modes. And we'll start with Squawk Talk here because... 
Well, frankly, I just feel like the end result is a little bit more disappointing. So what you're going to start by doing is pulling these pieces out here. And that's his wings, as you can see. And you kind of flip this out. And you can see you have this ball joint here. But it really doesn't offer all that much range of motion that it makes it any more worthwhile than the swivel that the G1 version has. Um, you do have this swivel here, which frankly doesn't look all that great with the... Uh, joint showing at the top. I kind of wish that was on the bottom since the bottom is the side you see less, but whatever. You're going to take his legs here and just kind of fold these on down like so. And then you're going to come to the tail and flip it out. Also, on a ball joint that doesn't really offer all that much. I mean, you can turn his tail feathers if you really want. Doesn't really do too much. And then you're going to struggle with getting the head out. And the head has no real good place, though that was a fluke there, no real good place to uh, actually grab it. The only thing I found is if you have somewhat of a fingernail, you can kind of jam it in under his head there and sometimes get enough force on it. It took me forever last night when I was remembering how to transform these guys to get that out. And uh, today it's working pretty easy, making a liar out of me. So there you go, there's Squawk Talk, and he is most definitely a bird. And I guess it's okay, but then you bring something like Buzzsaw here in, and you just see how, you know, Takara nailed it, and this looks so plain, like, where's the paint for his eyes? It's green, but it really doesn't stand out. You can almost not see it on most things. It's, it's just really disappointing. Whereas this one, it just looks sharp, really looks nice, the bird looks good. These wings don't look very good, and I know that this is more closer to G1 Squawk Talk, but I kind of wish that they made it look a little bit nicer. But, hey, whatever. We'll put him to the side. And then we'll take Beast Box here. And overall, I do believe I like Beast Box a little bit more than I like Squawk Talk here. And you take him, and you rotate his little face all the way around 360 here. Um, we'll leave it like that, a little shy of 360. Um, just because of how everything's going to work. You then take his little arms here, kind of flip them apart, flip his little legs down. Now the proper way is to have these little uh, ridges upwards for his feet, kind of like little toes. And uh, yeah, we'll figure out the best way to put them in a minute. Basically, he's going to stand like that. Take his arms, bring them down like so. Extend them out, but watch out if you pull too hard. You're going to just pull it right off the joint. It's just kind of like, almost like a big 3 millimeter clip. So, uh, it's easy to fix if you pop it off. But, just keep that in mind. Take them, rotate them forward, and then bring out his fists like that. Because what good ape doesn't walk on his, uh, knuckles? And, uh, yeah, there you go. You got Beast Box here. And overall, I think Beast Box looks pretty good. I really like him in his uh, gorilla mode. He does have one glaring problem, though. And that's that he's got a robot face for an ass. Um, hmm. That may be the first time I've actually cursed on my channel. Hmm. Oh, well. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, so, uh, robot face butt. Yeah, it's okay, though. Ultimately, he does look pretty good, and I can't complain. Now, when you bring out these accessories here, uh, they slot in kind of in a strange way. So you can see that the peg has kind of like the uh, things for your cassette player that would, well, if you had a cassette player, you're some of you may be too young for that, but it would basically tab into the reels, and that's how you would spin it. And this is ultimately how they make this work, is that you have to get this in, just the right angle and I find with uh, Squawk Talk it's a little bit annoying but you gotta get it in at the right angle here and then those will actually plug into the little teeth there to secure it. It's not too hard but it's certainly not as easy as just a round peg in a round hole. So there you go get the weapons in. That does improve uh, Squawk Talk a little once he has some weapons on him. I think he looks a bit better there. And Beast Box is uh, kind of the same, but he doesn't have those uh, rounded pieces, so his just work really nice and easy. 
Because all you do is plug him right on his back. Not like that, but like that. And there you go. You got Beast Box with his uh, laser cannons on his back. And again, I still really like how Beast Box looks and works. I really like this guy. So just for some comparisons here, let's bring in... Uh, stop falling over with your crappy little feet, Squawk Talk. Let's bring in, again, Buzzsaw. And we might as well bring in the other animal, Ravage. And we will uh, look at Rumble slash Frenzy slash whatever you want to call him when we combine the two. So yeah, there they are together, all the animals. And uh, again, I still think the masterpieces are far superior, but this guy's not bad. You need some help. So I was actually taking a couple pictures and decided to pull Ratbat here, because I figured, why not? We don't have a official masterpiece Ratbat yet, or a third party one that at least I own. I don't have the BTS Toys one. And I realized I have a knockoff Squawk Talk. Totally forgot about this. So let's take everything away here. And we'll just put you to the side because you are the focus of the review. And here is our regular Squawk Talk. And let's look at the articulation of a G1 toy. Of course, a knocked off version. Same thing. Flip this out. Flip these out. Except we don't have the ball joints here. But hey, we still have that mo movement. We fold these down. Like so. We fold the fe tail feather out, like so. We fold the head out. And we can still pose these backwards, same way. He has exactly the same poseability as the new one. And, uh, he also has the advantage of being a lot more firm when you set him down. He just sits on his legs a lot better, where this one just, like, kind of rocks around a bit. Yeah. Knock off. A third-party product. That really isn't all that much of an improvement. But, we do know that these guys have a combined mode, so perhaps that's where we're going to see the improvement. Uh, I really can't speak for that because I don't have a knockoff or legitimate version of uh, Beast Box. So, uh, I assume that this would transform pretty much the same way. Um, where you fold everything up and you just kind of put them like this. And that will end up being the legs for uh, Squawk Box. And uh, you can see you don't have any knees here. So we will see a slight improvement, I'm sure, with the advent of ball joints here. So we can take this, and it's very important you fold this up, because if you don't, that bird head will certainly be sticking out in an inappropriate area. And uh, yeah, we don't need that. We'll take his legs, we'll kind of rotate these down all the way, rotate them forward like this, and fold up his uh, feathers here. And you can see we've got, uh, if we did this right, I rotated the wrong part. You want to rotate the entire knee portion, so that way you uh, actually have knee articulation here on this guy, like so. And we'll put that to the side, and then we'll take Beast Box here, and I think he's still the more interesting transformation in everything. We take him, we fold his head back to put it back in his uh, cassette mode, and then we take this, and we fold it up like so. And that actually makes the cavity where this is all going to fit. You can see it pretty much comes together. We just take this, and we slide it straight up like so and then we take his arms and we put them in a way that actually makes sense for elbows and we take this and we can just plug these guys in on together there's little tabs here and then the slots on the back here to receive and if everything is put together right it should plug in nice and you should see that these feet kinda fit underneath the uh, back piece here for Beast Box. And there we go. We got a nice combined mode. And he doesn't look too horrible. Let's bring the camera up so we can see everything. 
Overall, I'd say he looks pretty good for a cassette combiner. Uh, you do have the knee articulation. Um, very short thighs, but functional. The nice shoulder rotation on the ball joint in and out. The swivel, the elbow, the little bit of wrist articulation you get. Um, you can turn that if you want for due to the ball joints. It's pretty nicely articulated for the uh, combined mode. Now, if you want, you can take... Stand. We can take... Okay, don't. We can take the Beast Box weapons here, and we take them and we plug in the Squawk Talk weapons to make combined weapons for Squawk Box. And then all you're gonna do is use this and plug it in on his arms like so. And I do think that that ultimately ends up looking pretty cool. And I think he does look pretty nice in his combined mode. Um, in terms of individual beasts, again, just beast box is what I like. So let's bring in our Frenzy Rumble here, whichever one you want to call him. And we'll sit him next to him and you can see there is a fairly significant size difference between the two of them. But both of them do pull off a humanoid form pretty well and frankly I would expect this one to be bigger made out of two uh, cassette members versus just the one. But yeah, it's not bad. It's certainly not Masterpiece. I uh, really can't say enough good things about the Masterpiece uh, characters here. Except for why does he have the blue head? Oh, because of his tape. Never mind. Stupid question. But uh, yeah, I can't say enough good things about the Masterpiece toys. This isn't bad if you want to fill out your uh, Soundwave cassettes. I'll certainly be picking up uh, Overkill and Slugfest when they come out. And uh, even though I don't have a Masterpiece Blaster, I mean, they haven't made one or anything like that yet, I'm still going to pick up Slam Dance because I did own that set of toys uh, as a child. So I kind of wanted a modernized version. And they're kind of an oddity because they don't turn into an animal or a humanoid they turn into vehicles which is weird and you can uh, like I said inappropriate totally inappropriate placement of the beak but on the other hand totally G1 accurate so this is T2RX6 I hope you guys enjoyed the review and I'll see you next time